Now, you were speaking about Barbara Walters interviewing you in a 2014 episode of The View, and she was pressing you hard on categorizing yourself as black versus biracial, something that would not fly in 2023, uh, even with Barbara, even with Queen Barbara. But it was those comments that you made about then President Obama. Looking back, do you regret that you brought him up in that conversation that was very personal to you? No. And again, the reason I brought it up, and you just said it, context is essential as journalists. Um, and when you look at the entire clip, it was just me repeating what had happened in 2014 and how this has been a topic, frankly, my whole life, where as a biracial, well, what do you, how are you, do you identify? Are you this, are you that? And, and, and I, I'll say it again, um, I am proud to be both. Um, the joke that I said, I said it on Megyn Kelly yesterday, I've been saying it for years, like, at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure my white mom was there when I was born. So for everyone saying that I need to identify as black and be part of the movement, well, first of all, um, who are you to tell, who am I to tell anyone how to identify? And that goes both ways. I am, if someone, if I'm walking in the airport and someone's, you know, oh yeah, you, you know, identify me as black, uh, that's 100% fine because I'm so proud of my black side, as I am of my white side. Barbara Walters brought up President Obama. He was president at the time, and I said, great, that is a fact. He can identify how he wants. And when I talked about his black father, he had written a book about his black father not being there, which breaks my heart. It's a fact, and he chose that, and I can choose this. And I think at the end of the day, that's the bigger story here, right? And maybe not story, but lesson, is for some people to be able to tell others how to identify, and that's okay. Yeah. But that person to not be able to stay true to who they are, that's where the hypocrisy lies. That's where I say enough. We are very open about other people identifying as what they want to these days with the LGBTQIA plus crowd so, and transgender or transgender athlete. I mean, we're, we're very open about everyone being able to be who they are. Unless you're biracial and you choose to say I'm biracial, not black. Well, that's we an interesting point. Both ways. That's Either an interesting point. And accepting and tolerant or we're not. Well, and, and you say, you know, a, a, a biological man can say that he is a woman or she is a woman, but that somebody like yourself, when you made these comments, because it was the former president, you knew the line you had to working for ESPN, where there was a certain line drawn of this is what I'm allowed to talk about, and if I say this, it's going to cause an issue. What was your breaking point? Was it being forced to take the COVID-19 vaccine? Uh, number one, I didn't really know the line. I was having a conversation when uh, in that podcast in particular. I was having a conversation uh, where he his team did a good job with some research on on topics that I had spoken about publicly before, and I was sharing my personal opinion on a mandate that I complied with. I complied, um, but I can have an opinion about that. Mm -hmm. I can have an opinion about my experience as a biracial woman. So I was just being honest on my own time off the airwaves of ESPN. And um, to me, that's quite different from many of my colleagues who chose to speak about non-sports issues on social media, on ESPN airwaves, elsewhere during work hours. And so again, to me, it's just about um, the hypocrisy of holding some people to some standards and, and others not. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.